everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays XCOM 2 or The Chosen. I forgot what game we were playing temporarily. I'm getting a weird bug. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with it, but like my event queue keeps randomly appearing and then disappearing. But as long as it doesn't mess with the actual like you know what we're doing in the game, I don't mind too much. It's only if it if it ruins my save, I'll be a little cheesed. Um Sure, we can instantly make hell weaves, but how often do we get hit by melee? How often do we even get targeted by melee? Pretty much never. Like, if a stun lancer lives long enough to get close to us, something's gone terribly wrong. Mind you, they're not the only enemies that can uh, melee you, but probably the most likely, considering that loss just melt. So, we're, uh, I was looking to see if we had anything to build, but we don't. We have some experimental stuff coming in the Proving Ground. Um, the story beat is four days from now, the Black Side Vial's done. What we are doing right now is scanning for... I mean, we got a ton of alloys, so I'm gonna scan for Intel. That way we can uh, move into New Brazil. And we go to the... What is this? Codex Brain Coordinates? This is where you go to the gate, or whatever, the, the psionic gate which is why the enemies are called gatekeepers there's 32 intel for us in fact we probably don't even need to scan for more intel now but we might as well um i'll tell you what let's uh let's fabricate a pcs or something we'll send like a, a workable unit out here like robert and then just a random soldier no offense meant josh but a random soldier i'm not gonna put intel on this i don't mind if they're wounded because we, we really don't need an A, B, C, and D team. Yet, at least. Um, no, 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 Before we go here, because we know we're probably going to have another mission fairly soon. Bear and Kate. They've reached a new level of tactical compatibility. Must be nice. Um, and Austin and Nick. Unavailable for three days. This takes them to the second level, which gives them, uh, essentially, like, uh... What's the hollow targeting? It gives them like peer to peer hollow targeting, basically. Not that relevant yet, but they're only out of commission for three days, and we've got backup specialists, backup grenadiers, you know, coming out of our butt, basically. Stasis shield. Stasis can be cast on allies, rendering them immune to any attacks and stunned for one turn. Not immune to any attacks and stuns. Immune to any attacks and stunned. Solace could be good. I mean, I, Stasis shield I can understand as well. Fuse, I don't really like. Um, I guess I'd rather go for the one that uh, removes impairment to begin with. We'll just keep scanning here. Hopefully we don't have a mission until the bond is done. Still can't believe it's come to this. I still can't believe this is the story beat we're getting like in the late game. I, I really... I wouldn't say a sequence broke, but I would say that I, I did this much later than I could have. Genetic sequences in near infinite combination, yet all bearing similar genetic markers. Human markers. There must be thousands of them. Tens of thousands, and the procedure is still nowhere near complete. Which is why we need the ship's computer to find out where they came from, by cross referencing them with the data we've managed to hack from the Advent Network. It's an admission file. From one of the gene therapy clinics. Avatar. Just what exactly is in that vial? In my worst nightmares, I would never have imagined. Doctor. I believe we have found the missing civilians. That's... That's impossible. The gene clinics. Millions of people just looking for help. Medically screened and selected. Suitable candidates taken to that contemptible facility to be processed. We find into the material we now possess. But why do this? I could not begin to fathom a guess at this point. There exists no research that would ever warrant this. It's genocide, Doctor. And these people are walking right into it. We may not know what they're doing with this stuff. But I think I can find out where it's going. Got it. The high security protocol. 
production facility. Standard defensive complement. Then I strongly suggest we pay them a visit, Commander. Agreed. The information we gained could prove invaluable towards stopping the aliens. True On the other hand, I could just continue passively scanning to pick up a limited amount of intel. Tell me more, please. Uh, okay, that's not really what I was going for. Complete the Black Sight Vile coordinates mission. It looks like we've got Black Sight Vile. Us, One million people, blah, blah, blah. I mean, not really blah, 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 but you know what I mean. Do we go for encrypted codex data, or do we research maybe uh, something that gives us a tactical advantage? Which at this point is, is essentially just the plasma lance. Well, not necessarily true. I think we go for the assassin's weapons. Get that super shotgun and the katana. The reason, by the way, oh, they have reached the bond training, which is swell. Let's have Mathis and Sinvicta go through the same thing. Um, like so. Um, excuse me, sir. I don't need to choose. You got it. What I should say is, like, I, I'm just not sure if we want to go on this mission just yet. Oh, we, we actually can't go on this mission just yet. Let's go on the forge. We must make contact with the local resistance first. So we definitely want to make contact here as well. A lot of people have messaged me and said, NL, please build some kind of resistance comms. Seems like a sensible approach. We're going to start by making contact. No, we don't have the intel yet. we got to finish our scan. Um, shortly, we're going to make contact with our new facility. We need uh, one. No, we need 11 more intel. So we're going to scan at Reaper HQ for a minute. Just because, I mean, we, we have almost like late, 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 late game upgrades. All we need is... To complete the Avatar project, which involves doing all these story beats. Dragon rounds. Do bonus damage to all targets and can set some alight. Nothing wrong with that. Next is a heavy weapon, I think. Experimental grenade and then heavy weapon. Because the heavy weapon only takes a day. We have a mission. Extract VIP. Codex, shield bearer, officer, trooper, gatekeeper, archon, specter. What does this mean? It means specialist plus flashbangs. We also get 80 intel for this, which is really nice. Engineer, less relevant, but... Uh, so, we want blue screen rounds, EMP grenades, flashbangs, a specialist or two with Haywire Protocol, even though... I, I don't know if Haywire Protocol is that essential for gatekeepers, because I believe they only become vulnerable after they open up. So, we'll see how that works. Anyway, we're if we're behind on anything right now, it's essentially uh, largely just... making like resistance uh contacts coffee still hitting the brain my apologies uh sure we'll take nick nick is bonded with austin so that's a good match mary murphy is fine we might as well take our reaper well bear is bonded with kate but kate's still tired from earlier mission um we could take our psi operative who is like fairly well equipped why not Let's, let's give her attempt, an attempt here, I should say. Uh, I don't want to send Bear. I'll send Mox, because Mox is... Oh, he's tired, sorry. He's presently on Bonded as well, though. So who's our highest level non-tired soldier? It's Paula. Okay. Make utility items available. Make weapons available. Make armor available. This mission shouldn't be too bad. There's only, like, 11 enemies, so... Uh, Fox, you're on, like, damage duty today. You take the Disruptor Rifle. You take, uh, I mean, absolutely you're gonna take the Skull Jack. Because you're our Haywire Protocol boy. And even though you are a medic... I'm just making sure that I'm correct that you have Haywire Protocol, yeah. Um, you can be the, uh, you can be the combat hacker. And then Austin can serve as the actual uh the medic if necessary so we know we're fighting a lot of uh a lot of advent and then a lot of robotic units so you somebody should take blue screen rounds does it have to be you not necessarily I mean, you don't need a hazmat vest for certain you could use a stasis vest it gives you a little bit of self-healing tracer rounds would also be fine Dragon less likely to be useful. Venom less likely to be useful. I don't think robots can bleed here. Nick might want to take blue screen rounds. 
so that he can use the Shadow Keeper or whatever the. Um, he, just give him the stasis vest and move on. Um, so that he can use uh, his pistol many, many times to shoot. And he, he doesn't need extra speed for now. Dude, we have so few PCSs. Or at least so few that are equipped. Alright, Austin. I could give you the Bolt Caster. I think the Bolt Caster has been fine. But people are yelling at me about it, which I don't take offense to, but rather, maybe it's a smarter idea for me to just try out the Plasma Rifle for now. And, uh, for giving you the Plasma Rifle. Do we have a Grenadier on this mission? Just let me check that. We may not. We do not. Okay. Without a Grenadier, someone should take a Mimic Beacon. And, uh, it might as well be our Medic. In my opinion. Now, Nick, you're kind of an important part of this. You're definitely going to take Dark Claw, Dark Lance, whatever. And Dark Claw, okay, I was right about that at least. Ignores armor. You're going to take blue screen rounds. And then... You can't take tracer rounds as well, so... Uh, I think on top of that, you might take a mind shield. But I'm just going to give you a plasma grenade. You're going to be shooting like every turn. Mary Murphy, you're kind of in a weird spot. Certainly Celestial Gauntlets. I mean, you only get to choose one thing. And I think, sadly, I have to give you uh, the Flashbang or an EMP Grenade. So I'm going to start with an EMP Grenade. Because we're running out of units, essentially. Now, our, well, our Psy Operative, most of the time they're going to be doing some kind of psionic attack. So I don't, I don't mind giving her uh, the rifle. That seems fine by me. Oh my god, I right-clicked for the 18th time. All right, loadout. Advanced Psy Amp. This is all fine. I don't think she needs a mind shield. She certainly does not need blue screen rounds. The thing is, like, somebody's got to take the flash big to deal with the codex. We also have no rangers on this mission, which is, uh, tougher than usual. I guess it's a positive thing to have so many options that we actually, like, don't get to take enough. She's never going to be shooting her pistol, or very rarely going to be shooting her pistol. So let's give her a flashbang grenade. Um, and she can only take one grenade. So are we really not going to take a second EMP grenade? We gotta deal with the gatekeeper, dude. Well, apart from that, um, I mean, let's give her the mind shield then. You know, she's probably already immune, but why not? Ah, we can't give her a nano scale. Let's give her the mind shield. I don't know if she needs it. Like her, she might be leveled up enough that it's not that relevant. Um, but that's that's okay. Let's give her uh, superior stock. She's not gonna be shooting very often, probably, but. Let's give her a superior laser sight. And then fake Draganova. I think you take blue screen rounds because you have Banish. Nobody's using any special armor yet. I think that that's okay. Um, we're going to launch. The one thing I will say about this is that we got some serious problems with respect to our loadout. Because we have no grenadiers, it's really hard for us to shoehorn all of the uh, all of the special grenades we want to take. In particular, we definitely need to take a flashbang to avoid codex garbage. Maybe I'm overrating the power of code codices this late in the game, but it doesn't matter that much, I think. As long as we take a flashbang, that unit's done. Um, and then I just hope we have enough damage to destroy the uh, gatekeeper before it gets a chance to attack because one attack from the gatekeeper can do an awful lot of damage we also might not have any shredders now that I think about it so we only have one concealed unit fake Draganova we might not have to fight everything which is an important thing to remember Well, that's just about the worst thing ever. Yeah, okay. I, I don't mind this. I should have given Nick the spider suit so we could just come over here. But he, he could have gotten spotted by doing so. So, just going to try to... Oh, did you trigger a pod? No. Yes? No. Just just a weird loading 
situation there. So we're just going to stay uh, tight to each other here. We're going to keep the squad close. So we don't accidentally trigger a pod, ideally. And we're going to keep Nick up near the forefront here. Because the more uh, snipery snipers, we want to have him way back. But the... Uh, the more pistol-y snipers, especially with something like blue screen rounds, I want to keep them... Uh, I want to keep them back. Or sorry, I want to keep them up at the front so that they can hit as many targets as possible. Like, ideally we want this... We want Nick to shoot at the gatekeeper infinity times. Since nobody is concealed anymore, we're going to make a move here. Quite a large move and still no enemies. So our first two moves, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think I want them to essentially cover the, the width of the bound that we want to see. And if we don't see anything, then we just move our other units up to cover... Within the the kind of arc denoted by the first two moves. Thus, like, drastically minimizing our odds of accidentally discovering a pod with our final unit. Because we want enemies to walk into our sphere of influence, rather than vice versa. That's a very metal way to explain that. Okay, this will probably pop a pod. I'm gonna make a large move that's still blue. Two Archons and a uh, Spectre. Archons might be, as I've said a couple of times now, the most annoying enemy in the game for me right now just because of the sheer ridiculousness of their dodge. They tend to be substantially tankier than I'd like. Let's look at our psionic abilities. Completely stun the target for a turn, but renders them immune to any attack or damage. So we can take a unit out of commission, either on our side or the enemy's side. Soul Fire does guaranteed psionic damage to the enemy. Five to seven. It's not bad. Yet. Um, grants a bonus action to a nearby squad mate. Okay. Insanity. Debilitating telepathic attack. I like that. And Void Rift. Immediately damage damages everything within. What's the damage on it? Four to five? And organic enemies have a chance to suffer insanity. Are these guys organic? Well, on the one hand, they got skin. And on the other hand, they got, you know, a, a, a set of angel wings made out of brass and jet fuel. So, I'm not sure. Uh, I kind of think that the right play there is to give the psionic troop the final move because if we can kill two units we can stasis the last one and then get them next turn it's kind of like an extra haywire protocol so because we can shoot first and have it not end our turn unless that's does this mean end turn it should just take an action because of the dark claw well the other thing we could do is lightning hands first and then face off, but it can only hit one unit. Can we get close? We can get close enough to C3. So? PO. So I think this is Nick's move. We found enemies. Essentially, shoot your whole wad. Archon, Archon, Spectre. Start by just shoot at the one with the highest percentage chance to hit. We could also still use our sniper rifle, but I want to. I want to get all this done right now. So take the Archon, hit him. Four damage. It's not good, but it could be worse. Following that, that's a free move. Of course, Battle Frenzy. Battle Frenzy. Then we're going to do Face Off, which has a chance to hit all three. And actually missed all three. But still, that's just one action from Nick, so it's not that bad. So, we got Fox. 75, 55... Trying to see if maybe we might have a crit. I don't think we do. So in that case, we're just going to take our 75. Because it doesn't get any better than that. 
And that's just a solid hit. I got nothing against that. So, uh... Oh, and you got a free action out of it. So just go for the kill, ideally. Lovely. Uh, so the, uh, that's the hair trigger in action, essentially, being extremely good for us. Uh, now... We're pretty close to just winning, uh, against this pod. Not winning overall, but winning against this pod. So we got Draganova. Um, she could banish a target. Is this, this might be one of the ones you can only use once per mission. So I don't want her to do that. I just want her to take a shot. Because I really think that she might want slash need to use Banish against a Gatekeeper. So Austin comes in. Let's just look at our inventory. We got Mary Murphy left. She can rend and do a decent amount of damage. We got our Psionic Troop, who could shoot, but probably is more likely to use, like, a Stasis to put a unit into... Protection, but also not fully protection. The other thing is Austin might be able to hack and disorient these enemies, but I think if possible I would much rather just have him take a decent shot. Sure, go for the Archon. These are some bad misses. Like Nick and Austin missing and Draganova missing is pretty horrible. So we have Warlock. Oh, yeah, I mean. We actually have a sincere problem now. Because, um, sure, we can stasis a unit. I want to stasis the Archon. If possible. Because the Codex... Not the Codex, sorry. The uh, the Spectre almost never shoots. Instead, it usually creates like a a different version of us. You know, the, like the Shadow version. Um, she doesn't have like Blade Storm or anything. Hey, hey, hey! Forty-two percent. Just uh, go on Pistol Overwatch. You're never going to hit this thing, because it's going to be in, like, you know, the Shadow Realm when it comes over here. But I think, conceivably, you're probably not going to take damage. Never going to work, yeah. Uh, you're not going to take damage from this thing. You're just going to lose a squad member for a second. And then this guy's going to go run. To be honest, this is a fairly good... Oh, the, this guy's like, I'm out of here. Um, to be honest, this is like, not that bad. Considering how many misses we had there. Nick missed three pistol shots. If one of those pistol shots had landed, we then could have rendered a unit. If we'd rendered the unit and killed them, we could have parried. This is using our, um, our Templar. We wouldn't have had to use Stasis. That leaves our Psionic Trooper available to do something else. You know, you get the idea. Alright, so step one is, is just returning Austin to this mortal plane. Yeah, that's pretty okay. Kind of like the idea of Nick going first here, though. 88, 57, 87. I mean, the Spectre's got to go. Let's go for something like this. An 8 damage dodge is pretty solid, but he's still got a lot of HP left. Um, so we would, ideally we'd like to build some focus on this turn. We got no stasis left. So like, somebody's got to get the kill here. Keep in mind, Austin will return to this mortal coil. So I think you just take this shot. Lovely. 11 damage. A little bit better. Then... You... No, 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 no. Don't even worry about that. Get over here. Please do not pop another pod. However, you do kind of function as a mimic beacon. Oh, we should have done it from the other angle. I don't think it would have hit, but... Um, we do have kind of like a, a mimic beacon in here. Because of the parry. Now... 
Malf does not have a shot. It really depends on our desire to get in there. Like a 66 is a is a good shot. Don't get me wrong. Game does not like Austin right now. 79 is better. Obviously, we're going to take an attempt at this. It's always risky to shoot with Austin. Because he has the Mimic Beacon, which is our Get Out of Jail free card. But if we use our Get Out of Jail... Uh, get Out of Jail. If we use our Get Out of Jail free card against enemies that... Uh, we've only got the two shooters left. Against, uh, you know, an enemy that showed up in a pod of three. Like, we're... Not in a great spot, in my opinion. Alright. So I think you start by moving the Psionic Trooper. Then you move Malph to her previous position. Now we do have two different forms of guaranteed damage we can do here. But I think I'd rather just take the shot. The reason being... Well, with Malph at least. I, I want to save combat protocol for robotic units. We only get two attempts at it. Then... Guaranteed psionic damage to an organic enemy. The tissue melts away. Essentially, a free frag grenade. Picking up an easy kill. Lovely. Okay, we're back. Slowed us down more than it should have, but we're uh, still going okay here. 11 turns. We've killed 3 of 11 enemies, so we've got a long way to go. Those weren't even 3 of the hardest. Even though Archons tend to be annoying. Obviously, like, uh, oh, man, it's a decent distance. Obviously, a, uh, you know, a reload is in order. But we kind of just have to continue making a little progress turn after turn here. So if we're confident that we're not going to, is this free reload? No. If we're confident we're not going to see enemies, we can make some yellow moves, but apart from that, we're kind of stuck in, like, pseudo bluto territory. Please, you're like one tile away. Do not pop a pod. Same with you, Warlock. The so-called Warlock. Um... Malf, you should move up to here, maybe. You should hunker. So we just got Austin and our Templar left. I kind of I want to look with Austin and see what we get if we hack this. Because if we get disorientation, we want to keep this in range. Soldier gains squad sight. Why would I ever take a 30% chance for squad sight? When it'll result in another pod. <laughs> Honestly, like, not even worth doing right now. Probably not worth doing ever. But you might say, well, he's not doing anything else. Yes, he is. He could reload. Saves him an action in a couple of turns. Right, Malf gets the free Overwatch. I forgot about that. All right. Uh, big moves here. I think you can afford to take the first move with, yeah, like either Mal or Austin. The idea being we don't want to choose where to put our Templar when our Templar could do a lot of damage uh, at melee range. It's going to have Austin take the second move. Perfect mission if we never have to even see the Gatekeeper. There's no shame in that as far as I'm concerned. We've already killed... Three? Two or three. Okay. Um, On my way. Honestly, pretty productive move here. Fortunately, Draganova pretty much just got a bolt. You might as well. And then... You might as well. Alright. Continue with the overwatches unless Nick just popped a pod. Which wouldn't even make sense. We know there's a pod at extraction. Oh, Malf definitely should have reloaded. Um, we know there's a pod at extraction because we saw them when we when they showed us the extraction point. Be 
We could probably make it there in three turns, and we've got eight. Not to sound cocky, but it's not actually like cockiness. Okay, we found our gatekeeper. What, what I mean is that that gives us five turns of leeway to deal with combat. This is 100% where we want to mess with this gatekeeper. So, um, and by mess with, I mean like destroy unequivocally. Who has blue screen rounds? Draganova has blue screen rounds. But she has no shot on the gatekeeper, which is quite alarming to me. We need things that go through armor right now. You also have blue screen rounds, so this is important. The sh the these shots ignore armor, so we definitely like lightning hands, please. Good hit, Nick. You're you're like lights out rock star here. Um, then a pistol shot. He's a god. Then... Face off. Nick. He, he fundamentally completely redeemed himself right there. Okay, so we look at that. Um, and we look at someone like Malf in this situation and we go, okay, combat protocol. Not quite gonna get the kill guaranteed, but close. Certainly a situation in which we would probably say the better play is for Draganova to take the high ground and then just shoot the gatekeeper if she's got a good chance. Uh, and, and she does, actually. 72 is pretty solid. Gatekeepers explode, though. We, like, I want something that would get the kill lethally here, so I, let's just think about this. Just save us an action. Like, the, our psionic trooper can do... Oh, no, soul fire's on cooldown still? It is. But stasis isn't. All right, this is actually very good to know. I mean, we can give Nick an extra action, but I think Nick's done enough. Fox is kind of an interesting case right now because he could do a 70% chance to just knock a unit out instantly. I guess we could have Draganova banish. She takes three shots. Uh, she, she'll wipe it out with a banish for sure. Just needs to hit one more. Wow. I don't think we ever missed that. Whoa, you scared me. You feeling okay, Tomo? Okay. So we need uh, complete and utter destruction. Eight to nine damage. Only need to do eight here in order to get the kill, so that should work. Problem solved. She will parry as well. And then we got this guy over here. We can't use Soul Fire. We could Void Rift, but it seems like kind of a waste. 68% chance to get the hit. Let's just take that. It's kind of a low risk play. Well, it's actually a zero risk play in hindsight. We'll just continue to move up here, because we're completely fine. That was, like, an exceptionally, like, way better than expected three-turn little gamble there. So, I mean, you should just end turn if you got nothing else to do. Overwatch and, uh, yeah, end turn. We, there's going to be another pod. We know that, again, there's enemies at the exit, but we're close, we're close enough to the exit that I'm not overly concerned about it. Okay, we got a Codex and a Spectre. Again, two very annoying enemies. This is even more annoying, because this guy might duplicate if we hit him. I don't know, maybe it's good that we missed. Yeah, I, didn't get it. I believe our Templar has the flashbangs. So the fact that the Codex is getting close enough to the Templar to get hit is awesome. Never gonna work. It has lightning reflexes and is, like, impossible to hit? We still, I think because, I, I don't know why you're hurt, actually. Um, now that I think about it. So, yeah, we have the flashbang. We could always use our psionic troop to just inspire this unit. Um, the other thing is we could just kill it in one hit. But we gotta make sure that we're killing it in one hit. 
And I don't think we can guarantee that. How can he not? Like, she's not doing anything else. You were so good against the gate gatekeeper, so I'm like liable to suggest that I'm not that angry, but like I'm a little angry. That's alright, Nick can get the job done. That's extremely annoying. So he has like 1 HP, 3 HP. So I mean, here's... Sadly... Oh, it's an EMP bomb! Who has the flashbang? It's our psionic trooper! That's actually horrible! One sec. 100% definitely not going to get the kill. Although we can do some damage. Okay, 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 okay. I got I got plays. Sadly, you like have to hit the codex. So I'm gonna move you like very slightly. Sure thing. We we've got an out here. I mean it shouldn't be a surprise, but we can also just stasis this codex slash this guy, and that might actually even be better. Now that I think about it. Like, okay, get stasis. The only thing I worry about is slashing this guy and getting close enough to pop another pod. But then we still have Austin, and Austin can toss the Mimic Beacon into a position where we're less likely to be flanked. We still got seven turns. Alright, so this, it, it's a bit risky, because it could pop a pod. But I like the idea of a guaranteed kill on the Spectre, because it gets us to uh, max focus. Sweet. And everyone's alive. So, um, at this point, Malf just move up. We're hoping to not have to reload at all over the course of the mission. There's no real reason uh, to overwatch unless other enemies walk into our area of effect. So, there's nothing... I mean, I, mean, I am going to overwatch this just because there's nothing better to do either. <laughs> and Malf gets the guaranteed overwatch. Then, and then on the next turn, we probably we could have done this faster. But this is a relatively safe way to do it. Because we, we had wasted some of our actions earlier. So now you flashbang the Codex. Not really the most glamorous use of our Psionic Trooper. But let this be a lesson to us to maybe ensure that we take Grenadiers in the future. Because this is like not really that good. Um, I would rather have a unit that's further ahead take the, the kill shot here. Still can't quite get the kill there. Um, maybe we can get two birds stoned at once. Well, it's good. Hair trigger, data cache we can use for intel. Uh, but predominantly, that core might be useful. And there you go. So it turns out we didn't need the flashbang at all. But, ability point. So we still got six turns. This is being handled relatively well. Nick's got a free reload, so he will not use... His first move here. Finally. Just gonna take some small moves with these units because we know that uh, there's an inherent risk we might accidentally pop a pod. Six turns left. AKA, plenty of turns left to get to the exit. Looking good. And now, I'm trying to think, I think we've killed 8 out of an 11 possible units, so... Absolutely should have taken Spider Suit on somebody here. I think instead... I guess that'll be okay. We're just gonna get all of our units close to where they can climb. So that on the next turn we can do like a real... It doesn't even have to be an assault, we can just leave, but we'll probably try to do some kind of, uh, you know, pseudo assault here just to get the extra experience. And everybody can overwatch, and overwatch, and maybe consider like a little overwatch here. Alright. Dude, easy mission. Very difficult in my butt. Might as well put our Templar in the... Extraction zone 
then if things get really tough, they can just run away. We didn't pop the pod in the process. Well, okay. In that case, let's start with Austin. We're just gonna take blue moves. Get like every unit up. And then if... I mean, you can just go. If uh, every unit gets up, we'll move every unit with a yellow move into the extraction zone, which we, we already know by default is gonna happen here. Um, and we actually are just going to complete the mission. Austin did get slapped. But apart from that, pretty textbook. Really, really nice uh, rolls on the gatekeeper kill. Like, I'm not gonna pretend we deserved that. Like, we played a, a completely tactical, flawless style of game, but... Nick and Draganova just iced the gatekeeper. And that calls for a stretch. Flawless mission. We're gonna take a mission photo. This is a duo with Nick and Draganova, no question. Who is actually Paula Taylor. And then her pose is not gonna be pose two. Yeah, deadly duo, please. I like it. Give me uh, a duo formation, please. I'm gonna need to change location on this one, boss. I want both of the rifles fully in the shot. Oh, that's good. Come on. Oh, there you go. Wherever they go, the aliens die. I think we've used that propaganda slogan like 30 times, but so be it. 20 years of peace and prosperity will not be undone Easy mission. Now, I don't know if we got any promotions there, but nobody's wounded. We might have some tired units. I mean, Austin did have his psychic soul sucked out of his body, but yeah, nothing there. And two tired units. That's fine. Bond level up available. Yeah, they, they've had that for a while, actually, now that I think about it. Cool. Um, relatively strong. We got a lot of intel for that. And a new engineer. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal, of course. Subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.